What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the garage build, and we're going to jump right into prepping these garage door jams. And these posts are going to get an extension nailed in with some 20 penny nails. That way, the post height will reach to the top of that last truss, and that just gives some added strength to the front of that wall during wind loads. And then I'm going to take a 2x12 and I'm going to use this. I'm going to square it up to my post and make sure it's uh, you know perfectly perpendicular. I'm going to nail it off with some 20 pennies and take a 2x6. Cut to 16 foot exactly, and that's going to define the width of my door. Once I screw it, I always like to bring back in with some uh, 20 penny nails, and then I'll bring that other post nice and tight and nail it off. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking some 2x6, and I'm cutting it down to be the back side of my jam. So this is, this is going to help that garage door you know, plane in with my header. Everything is going to be flush and it's going to seal properly. Then I'm going to take that next 2x6, and I'm going to use my calculator app to determine the height of my peak from my door header and that's what that is that's connecting the bottom of the door header to the top of the peak then I'm just gonna fill in with another 2x12 on top of the first one gives me enough room for all of my garage door header um, you know springs and track for opener all that good stuff once we got everything connected we're gonna use the skid loader to flip it over and uh, that way we can put the board that we want to on the outside we're gonna try and do as much as we can on the ground the other thing that we hadn't done is we hadn't marked these posts with our story pole so we pull the story pole out from previous and we go ahead and just double check make sure we got all of our marks on that post so then we're going to take a two by six and that's just going to be used to tie the outside of the post together give us a place to screw above the door once we got as much done as we can on the ground use the skid loader lift it into place put it in the brackets and fasten it that easy. It still has all the structural webbing that the rest of our trusses do. The only thing that makes this one different is that we run these horizontal lines to install our siding on. So with that in mind, we're not really worried about the header structure of the overhead door. We're really more or less using this for, um, the two by 12s are for our backside of our overhead openers to mount to and the springs and all that. So other than that, not really structural. Our wind ties will connect post from that end to this end, and uh, that's about it. So once we've got our jam posts where we want them and secured, we're just going to run up our pre-cut wall girts, and we know that if we flush up the inside of the jam and it goes to the outside 2x6 on the sidewall, everything is going to be perfect because we've got everything already dimensionally you know, measured and cut. Up here at the top, I'm going to fasten the post to the truss with three 20-penny nails, top and bottom cord, and then I'm going to put one 20-penny nail in each other connection. And just like that, the wall framing is complete, and it's on to overhangs. So, a lot of questions with how overhangs are done always. Uh, it's actually quite simple. Because our purlin sticks above the truss, that three and a half inch plane, and you know, once again, I'll reiterate, we are doing a two by four on edge due to our eight foot truss spacing. If you do a four foot truss spacing or less, you can lay your uh, purlins flat and then you're gonna do a little bit different detail on your tail, but this is how we do it. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna measure off of the face of our column. And we're gonna set it at one foot. What that does is by time our actual subfascia is put on our two by six, from the face of this 2x6 will be a full one foot overhang. What I sometimes like to do is put a screw up in this gear. That helps lock down where that is so it won't move on you. While you drive those 60 penny nails. Okay, so once that is done, we have, we've got what we always call our, uh, mm, that's got a star on it. We're always smart enough to put stars on our odd end base because that dimension is a little bit different. I didn't see it. So we call this our in-betweener board. It really, that's just our scientific term, but 
it is going to come in here right on the face of the column. Sometimes we call it our bevel board, but we don't put a bevel on it. Even though the roof plane will hit this point, um, I suppose you could put a 412 pitch on the top of this board, but through experience, we learn where the time is well spent and where it's not well spent. So we just take a two by four, put it on an edge. And what this does is we don't have any purlins. Like our last purlin is gonna be right here and then our fascia is gonna be here. So this distance here, we don't want our roof steel to just span that distance, anything over two foot. So that's where this comes from. And we're using some uh, GRK structural screws here. Love those, they go in nice and easy. Believe it or not, those two 60 penny nails, they're gonna hold quite a bit. Uh -oh. Need a hand? Mm. Whoa! Rich here? Go ahead, you got a screw gun? Next thing we're gonna do is put our fascia on, which is a two by six, obviously pre-marked, pre-cut. And these are going to get screwed in. So obviously this is not a beveled edge on the 2x6. So we're going to make sure that this, this uh, plane comes right to this outside corner point. So when our roof comes down, once again, the GRKs. And the reason we like to screw these is so we can adjust if we have to later on once we're trying to straighten the building out. So when laying out the building with our story pole, if you remember that top socket nailer, we, inst we put that on the post exactly so that when we can put our trim here, this socket F and J, the top planes in with that two by six, and that is in plane with our fascia board so by doing that on the ground we don't have to come up here and get it all figured out and snap lines because we've already done that work here we're using a metal socket perforated on the eaves and i like to use the uh the brushless dewalt stapler it works pretty well Personally, what I like to do is I always like to, to staple right in the middle of each piece. That way I know where my staple is. So when I go to put my fascia on and put a fastener through, I know where not to screw. So when cutting my first piece of fascia, which is just a simple five and a half inch by one and a half inch post trim. I always make sure that I give myself an inch and a half dimension and I cut the bottom leg. I go ahead and put a little notch, same dimension in on the very top. You can take your square or if you have a nice set of benders, Once you get this crease started, then you can just take your hands. Kind of work that. You definitely want to check in. Make sure you're good on your end. 
Now for this first screw that I'm putting in, I'm not actually measuring anything. I'm eyeballing the center of that piece of fascia and I'm finding a rib that doesn't have one of those staples that I just got done installing. Um, and then I'm going to put a screw on the far left side here just as a temporary to keep it up in case we encounter any wind before I finish that detail on the end wall. So when I've got a piece of fascia trim here and I'm going to be bringing another piece into it, I always make a little notch on the bottom because on the underside there's a hem right here. I'll show you why. So when we go to put this other piece up, if you look, I'll show you here, right here. Well, I got to apologize because the camera died and I didn't know about it until I was kind of done with this process. So what I was trying to say is that hem on the underside of the fascia, I'm going to leave the one open and it's going to go over top of that notch that I just cut on the previous fascia. That's going to try to give it as seamless of a look as possible and it's also going to keep the joint nice and tight. So one other thing to note is when I'm putting those screws in the underside of the fascia, I'm being very cautious as to not overdrive them. What happens with a flat fascia like that is it will definitely show oil can. Oil can is what happens to flat steel when you put pressure on it. It gives it a wavy appearance, and I'm sure you've seen that before. And that's usually our biggest nemesis on these steel frame or steel trimmed buildings is trying to keep the trims to lay as flat as possible, as smooth as possible, and to look as straight as possible. Anytime you overdrive a screw, you risk oil can, and that is like the one thing that just bugs me more than anything. So remember... Put your screws in, pull them back out, and then just snug them in. Don't over tighten them. So now that I have got the soffits and fascias done, we've got our trim here that goes on the top, and we've got our filler strips in. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a string line on this little tiny job. There's no wind. String lines are perfect, and I'm going to string it. I've got a nail set here on this end, and I've got one way down there. And I'll just put a string line, and this is how we're going to get it straight. It's actually already really straight. I mean, it's maybe that's hard to see, but I promise you, it's really straight. Um, even our end is pretty, pretty darn good for not even... Uh, straightening it yet like we just installed it one of the biggest questions that we always get are or is how do we straighten the roof and what do we do to ensure that our sheets are square and running straight so i'm going to show you exactly how we set up the building to get it ready to roof so the first thing that you have to make sure is that your walls are all all level. Uh, really helps to have a point level like this from Sabila with these tall walls. Sometimes, like, you can get two times out of the right. Because I can span the entire length of this wall to determine if it's level. So, right now, looks like I need to take this wall. I mean, we're talking maybe. Maybe a 16th that way? Um, that might be too much. I don't know. Boom. Perfect. So, uh, you want to see that? Look good? Okay. Doesn't really matter at this point, but I'm just checking it. This has got to go that way. I think that you might have overdone it. Huh? I think you might have overdone it. Oh, yeah? I guess time will tell. Oops. What do you think, buddy? What do you think? Is that gonna work? Yeah, that'll work. We'll double check it again when we roof this side, but the uh, the reason I like the plate level here from Stabila is that it puts me on that nubby way at the top, 
and the one at the bottom. And with a post frame, sometimes your walls might be a little bit like this, even if it's just a little bit of an eighth of an inch, it'll hit your level and it will throw it out of plumb to where maybe you think it should be or it really is. And so by only having it at the top and bottom, it takes out some of the uh, inconsistencies in your wall. Let's see where we're at here. No, I love that. That's perfect. I can move that one in just a hair. Sometimes what happens is uh, we're going off the very top, which is a truss dimension. Um, eh, I think we could take it this way, just a just a hair. So what I like to do is just grab a board. Oh, there ain't nothing on that. So now that we have our walls plumb, we're going to go up to the roof and we're going to get our string line on the fascia and get those straight. Oh, we better check this end wall. Now that we have all of our walls plumbed up, I've got my string line set on the very edge of that sub fascia and I string line down to the other edge. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to take my square, take my square. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it up the back side of the subfascia and that string line should just barely kiss that square. So when that happens, I need to move this truss my way. Now with these little buildings, we can probably just throw a board up there and just kind of wedge it. You can see this one's gotta come a little bit. And then as I work my way down to that end, I think I get pretty good. So Zach, right here, buddy. Give a wedge on, give me a little wedge on this. So he's just going to basically force that board in. Holy, take it off, buddy. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Oh, oh, oh. Kiss it just a little more, dude. Yeah, give me just a little bit. Hair more. Uh, just a scotch more. Yeah, dude. All right, now come over here to this guy. Yeah, dude, like we're talking an eighth. And then I think, I think we're pretty good, man. Yeah, that's fine. Just shove that up there. So once this is done, I'll go up and I'll square the peak to this fascia line. Since I know that's level, and I know that's level, and I know this is level, and that wall's level. All three of these walls are level, which means if that peak is square to this fascia, I should be good. A little too much, Zach? Keep coming. Oh, give me just a scotch. Yeah, dude, I like that. That is, that's gonna be great. All right, man, I'm gonna get a square on this peak. And the way I do that is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull a tape measure from that point down to, let's say, uh, 16 feet. And I'll use 16 foot as my run. I'll get a measurement on the rise and then I'll use a calculator to figure out the diagonal. And whatever I gotta do to make this diagonal measurement the correct measurement, I'll push or pull that peak with the chains that I have going from end to end on the peak. Just as soon as we got everything squared up and ready to go, a storm rolled in, so we called it a day. So stay tuned for the next episode where we put some roof on. And once again, appreciate you guys following along. Hit that subscribe button, leave me a thumbs up, and drop a comment if you want. Thanks a lot.